Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going a little bit late, so we'll go quickly, but let's uh, start with Inspiro. I'm going to be brief. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Marita of the Sally with Inspiro Financial downstairs. We're your affiliate lenders. Come to you all. Thank you, thank you. I know some of you, some of you might, you might you may not know, so come on down and introduce yourself. Um, so just a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, we have launched our Inspira Financial mobile app, and it's working great. So what we'll do is when we get somebody we're talking to who wants to fill out an application online, I can really quickly just text this to them. They can go online, but what's really cool is that you can be co-branded with it. So. Come downstairs and talk to any one of the loan officers down there. We can help you load this up on your phone if you would like to. And then your clients get, and you, get regular notification of where you're at in the process. And there's a handy calculator on here and all kinds of great things. And then um, also the soda machine is fully functional. I know that's important. With Fresca. With Fresca. With Fresca. All right. Coke, okay. Diet Coke, wow. Dr. Pepper, By the way, it's funny, if you look Pepper. at ingredients of Fresca, it has fish oil, just for all of you who are uh, Fresca lovers. There we go. Oh, I know you're a Fresca lover. You're drinking fish oil, just for the record. It's healthy. I know, I'm just telling you. And if you really want something healthy, we even have a vitamin water down there on tap. So, oh. and a coffee machine with the espresso and all that fun stuff is down there as well. Okay, so uh, it's the 2020. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, base conforming loan limits went up. I know we've mentioned it before. So I'm just going to go over them real quickly and uh, listen because there will be a question at the end, and the person who answers it right wins this very cool Salt Lake Board of Realtors t-shirts, because you're all realtors, right? And on the back it says, that's who we are. So, <laughs> all right, so the base limit for conforming loans in Utah uh, for jumbo loans is increasing to 510400 uh, Some counties are higher than others. And Salt Lake and Tooele have not changed. That's six hundred thousand three hundred dollars. Wait, wait, wait. Jumbos or what? The um, the jumbo conforming limit across the state is now five hundred ten thousand four hundred. Used to be four hundred seventeen thousand. Five hundred ten. Yeah, five ten four hundred. Okay, so that's the base, and then different counties are higher than that. So you have Summit and Wasatch. 762, 450. I'm just picking the ones that you know. I think a lot of you here are probably working in. Davis and Morgan are 643, 300, and then the base FHA loan limit in the state is increased to 331,760, which is great news for uh, especially our first-time home buyers. And some counties are higher. Salt Lake and Tooele is 416, 300. That's awesome. And then um, Summit and Wasatch are 765600 I guess you might be able to find property up in Summit County for that amount of money. You can get an FHA loan on it now. And that's also the same for VA. Utah counting is 401350 um, And then there are others that we, we won't get into. But um, no, come VA down if you have any questions. We have flyers that you can pick up. VA doesn't have a cap, right? VA does have counting loan limits. Yeah. No, they do. So, um, who remembers what the base FHA loan limit in Utah increased to? Yeah. What I just said. <laughs> that was the conforming loan limit. You're close. Yes, John. 724. Nope. No, it's the one that's the minimum now across the state, at the very least, no matter where Five, you 10, are. 500. No, it's 300. She just... <laughs> <laughs> now I know how... See, this is a test. <laughs> See, like Joe are listening. Okay, John, you're closest. It's 315. Well, you were closest, so you win. 331, 760 is the least amount... Or in, in, in any of the counties, so even if you're down in Juab County or something like that. So here you go. <laughs> All right, so we do have flyers that you can come down and pick up that break this down for you because they are all changed and your clients may ask them when you're out. And if there's any doubt, have them contact one of us downstairs. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, one last announcement. Next Tuesday, we've got our uh, first summit of the year. 
If you have an RSVP with Becky at the front, just make sure you do that. Um, it's going to be good. Okay, you coming? I'm going. Awesome. Okay. For the whole thing. We're going to turn the time over to George. There you are, Me. my friend. I'm you here. are up. <clears throat> I'm up. I was yep. talking about back surgery. I'm doing a lot better. But someone that, uh, a few days ago said, now you've been on one a little bit too much. Don't offend everybody. So if I offend you, I apologize. Paul, don't get offended. You've been around me long enough, man. <laughs> He's easily offended. You can I know, use, you can I, know Taylor. I know, I know, I know. Taylor today. We'll be fine. All right. Gabby, yeah, you're a tennis player is what I was just told? Yeah. Is that true? All right. Avid, Who recruited avid you? Tennis player. Hmm? She's avid. Me. Yeah. Who did? Lucy. Oh, okay. I was going to say, so, uh, Ke but you know Kenzie, right? Uh-huh. She plays too, right? Right. She does. Yeah, Tucker. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Good deal. You didn't get recognized yet, Leslie. Do you guys already know who the great Leslie um, Uliberry is? The myth, the legend, movie. the mm -hmm. icon of industry at Vanguard title. Introduce her, Lindsay. Who is she? Well, I will say this. If you are looking for somebody in title, she would be the one that I would work with because, you know, she's she excited about the But yeah, I was going to say she was in the real estate side of things before. Our she was RTC title. for years. Well, yeah. and she has a real estate license. She knows our side of it. And I have never had a question like you ever worked with like my wife. So she's amazing at what she does. Like we just spend about an hour or so together. She'll go to the lens for you. I'm all warmed up, Alma. I'm ready to roll. I can tell. I can yeah, feel. I am chomping at the bit. You're not sweating yeah. yet, though. So. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not, yet. <laughs> not yet. But I hear it's cold in here. But you're in short sleeve. It's fine. I'm a big guy. It's fine. I know. I know. I know. Is anyone still turning on their air conditioner? All right. I'm the only one. I'd just like to point that out. I still am. Okay. windows. You can open them if they're snowing. It's kind of like you This is true. You can't open them here, though. That's the problem. All right. So I want to just spend a little bit of time. So look, there's all these different ways you can earn money in this business. We know you can go pound out and hammer out a ton of buyers. You can pound out and hammer out a bunch of listings. You can take those listings from multiple different sources. You can get your buyers from multiple different sources. So wherever you're coming from, if you want to alter, twist, or maneuver through what I'm going to talk about just a little bit uh, and relate it to like really where your ultimate focus points are in regards to maybe you're more buyer centric, maybe you're more listing centric, maybe you're uh, obviously, you know, title, there's lending from Rita, all these different things. You can take it from any angle, but I guess what I would just simply tell you is, is that the key to success in this business is your ability to present. And so I've, I've often said that life is a series of presentations, right? So look, just for the record, for all you single people, this could not be more important. It is all about the presentation. So there you go. Just say it once. It's all about the presentation, right? Right? Come on, Paul. Correct. Okay? Life is a series of presentations. You present where you want to eat today to your friends, and sometimes you win your way. I always like to let people think they're in control, Jason. Like, I might say something like to Jason, hey, where would you like to go? And I'm like, hey, do you want to go to this place, that place, this place? And I already have in my mind where I want to go, but I want him to think he's in charge, and so when he doesn't, when he, if he picks right, I'm like, great idea, but then when he chooses wrong, I'm sorry, wrong answer, we're going here. Um, but he never but asked me to go. that's true. <laughs> well, because you don't choose right. <laughs> wrong answer. That's right. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. That's right. That's right. Tim was saying I was giving you a hard time today. He was. Was no, I giving no, you a hard time? No, it was the other day. Well, that was today. I no, gave him a hard time today. Too. Too. Oh, was it? The, oh, no, I gave him a hard for, time the day before. I gave him a yeah. hard time today too. Yeah, I've been looking for over Friday. eleven years now. I'm used to it. I don't have a hard time. So, Jesse, yeah. do you know if you choose right, you'll take you to 4-H at Little America. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. All right. Well, let's get started. So, so look. So the bottom line is, is it's the way in which we present. And look, everything that we're going to do is the way in which we present. If we're going to have success at it, again, whether it's in your personal life or business life, but specifically, I want to talk about listings. And I think that no matter where you're coming from, no matter where you are in the industry or in the business, whatever your focal points are, I, what I don't need is someone walking out of here going, "Oh." He only talked about listings. Listings is where it is. All right, now I'm not going to call another buyer again ever in the history of my life. That I do not need coming back to me because I don't believe that either. I believe that, look, no matter where the market is, interesting enough, look, you know, in simple terms, if the market's going down, what type of market is it? Market's going down, what type of market is it? 
Buyer's market or seller's market? Buyers. If the market's going up, it's what kind of market? Seller's market. We're always going to have some ebb and flow of where our focal points are. I don't care whether it's you know this gal who's one of the top five agents. Does everybody know the ever lovely and beautiful Jessica Terry? Matt, do you know her? Okay. Top five agent in the company. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Nice job. That's awesome. And by the way, I remember when she was earning a hundred grand, and I remember everything that was going on in her life, and I look at where she is now. It's pretty freaking awesome. It's incredible. Um, so with that, just remember that no matter where you're coming from and wherever you are in this business, if you can figure out how to present, you're going to win the game. So don't get caught up into, well, wait, I do this or I do that, because I don't care the words you're presenting to your teenage son or daughter. I don't care the because look, you're trying to present them to or them to live a great life. You're presenting them to make good choices. You're presenting them. You can pre everything you do is about how you present. Okay, and how we communicate through that process. So with that, let's start with this. And I'm gonna actually start off almost right where I was with, with uh, Leslie and her group. But let's just look at this first word, communication, right? Look, when we talk about skill sets, what we're really talking about is our ability to communicate. And you communicate in three different ways in general, right? I mean, we could get real micro at this, but let's just divide it into three areas. The first one is gonna be based on what you say. How you say it, when you say it, what you say, like literally your voice. And then the second way, and these aren't in any particular order, is is the way you communicate is, I'm gonna put here is what you wear, right? What you look like, right? I mean, look, I, I, there's a different message with a tie, there's a different message with a suit, there's a different message in a pair of jeans, there's a different message in a Vegas dress. I mean, it's just different messages all across the board. I'm serious. doesn't matter. You're gonna send a different message. And anytime someone says to me, hey, do I, should I wear this? I always say, well, what message are you trying to convey? And so just think about when you're moving into this business and you say, okay, I'm going to present. Just the only question you have to ask yourself, it's not about, well, wait, I like this and I like that and I want to be me. Well, most people don't like you. So you being you isn't actually going to make you more money. I'm just being candid. You, your job is to be who you need. You need to be who they need you to be. And you may say, wait, is that fake? That's not fake. That is actually the highest level of reducing your ego to the fact that I need to be what they need me to be. And some of us get so tied into, well, I gotta do it my way. Well, your way will not help you earn money. Really, if you help them by you being who you need to be for them, it may mean that you are going to be in a certain way. I mean, look, today I'm presenting to uh, at, at, at 1.30, I'm presenting to this whole entire tech crowd and the CEO of uh, Silicon Valley or, or Silicon uh, Slopes and all this other thing we're doing. And uh, I can tell you that like the moment that I get in my car, I actually am ripping off my tie. And the reason I'm ripping off my tie is because I know who I'm sitting with. I'm sitting with the guy who is trying to be Mark Zuckerberg's wannabe. And I know that this is not gonna help me get what I want. So you may say, wait, but that's your statement. No, I don't, th I, well, I, my job is to be what my client needs me to be. So remember that when you're talking about what you're communicating based on what you're wearing. And I, 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 I just, I, I would challenge you that it's not that I need you to always sit there in your business suit, your suit and tie, just simply, but in the end of the day, that if, if, you know, you're right, if you're working with primarily buyers, you may not have to dress up as much as if you're working with listings. I get that. But at some level, think about again, what message am I trying to con convey? What am I trying to send out to the people that without even opening my mouth, what have I conveyed to the people that I'm in front of? And then you know the answer. And you know, listen, listen to that inner voice of, wait, I'm on the right track. Wait a second, I should change it. I should, you know? I mean, I'm used to that guy back there coming in a lumberjack outfit and Taylor's looking pretty sharp today, <laughs> you know? Exactly. That's right, all right? Okay, number three is based on what you do, or I'm gonna put, usually sometimes I'll put up here your body language, right? So it could be like what you do, your actions that you take, but what you do from the stand standpoint of how you shake hands, how you look them in the eye, how you do things. So again, how we do things, what we wear, and what we say is how we're communicating. And you know this, sometimes we may not convey any message whatsoever based on what we say, but just simply, and people say, gosh, I can't hear what you're saying because your actions, what? Speak, speak so loudly. Write or speak. So, you know, that's what they see. They see the action. So 
We know that all three of these things communicate something, and you can even break those down further. But in general terms, from the business standpoint, and when I'm representing and going out to try to take a listing, I know that I've got to take a step back and say, okay, what am I trying to convey in regards to my communication? And I just think that we, um, look, we all go through these cycles. One of the things I've realized that when I'm feeling most rebellious is to dress the nicest. Because the clear, if you weren't clear, by the way, if you didn't know this, but I can see that the moment that you're wearing something, and I know you well enough that you wear consistently a certain way that you dress consistently, and all of a sudden you 180 into t-shirts and flip-flops, I know something's wrong on the inside. It has nothing to do with the outside. You, it, and even though you may say, well, wait, you saw it because the outside, right? But the outside often is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. So at least if you're going to try to have a lot of stuff going on, on the inside, at least get the outside right. That's the easiest part. Right? I mean, it really is. You can fix the outside. You can look the part. But then I just give you my mantra for this year. Just this is a good one to write down. Write this down. If your presence, if your presence, you, your presence, meaning you, if your presence is not getting you what you want, your words won't either. Your words won't get it. Most of what you get is your presence, and that's what gets you business. Most of you just simply need opportunity to be in front of people. I still remember this, and we'll laugh about this, but I remember this is now, geez, this is almost 10 years ago. I still remember sitting in a conference room with Jessica Terry, and I said, hey, so tell me a little bit about your closing, and tr closing how you close. Do you remember this? I do. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've told it too many times when she's probably been in the room. It's, it's like Kenzie, like, you know, I tell the same stories over and over again. I'm getting old that way, Jason. Okay, but, but I'm sitting there, I say, hey, tell me just a little bit about your, your closing thing, because I'm not quite sure, like, why are you always having to go back and get the listing, and why is this? And so this was her clothes, Gabby. This is, no, this is true, right here. This icon right here. This is what her clothes was. Michael, you're listening? Yes, sir. Just make sure you're not texting someone. I'm sure you're hearing this. Okay, all right, that's good. I'm saying. She would say, hey, I've talked about a whole heck of a lot of stuff. I've given you so much information. How about I call you tomorrow or the next day and you let me know what you want to do? Is that, is that close? That, that's pretty close, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's the, sure they wanted to be. I know, but here's the cool thing. So this is the reason why I bring these kind of stories up over and over again is because, look, the difference in your presentation, I'm going to get back to this, the story she gave, is, but persuasion versus manipulation, here's the scary part. There's almost nothing different in any one of these things. The guy who's trying to con our, con, the con artist who's trying to con you, wears the great suit. The guy or gal who's trying to pull something over on you says all the right things. The person who uh, is trying to you know, pull one over on you, in some words, is again doing the right things. We're saying like our actions, they're shaking your hand with confidence, they're looking at you, they're promising you that they can you can trust them. They're doing all of the same things. But the only difference is, is this, is that manipulation versus persuasion is one thing. And I know you guys have heard this, but I just would challenge you that whenever you're going into any situation is what is your intention? What do you intend to have happen? What do you intend to have happen when you sit down at the table or you stand at their kitchen bar? or you're walking through the home, or you set the appointment. What is your intention? And the intention is, we know what the intention of the person is trying to manipulate, and we know the intention of the person who tries to persuade. But let me tell you why I believe that what she did still worked. Because this is the reality to, intent, to persuasion. This is long lasting. And this I'm just going to put here short-lived. And the reality is persuasion is long-lasting and manipulation is short-lived. It never lasts. You know that feeling when you feel like you just got duped. You feel like something's not right. You have a little buyer's remorse, seller's remorse, or like they, you, you, you signed something, bought something, did something, you feel like something got pulled over on you. You know that feeling. So the reality is, is that what's interesting is when she said, hey, I gave you a lot of information. Hey, why don't we talk a little bit later? The reality is she still got most of those listings. Why? Because persuasion is long-lasting and manipulation is not. 
I remember years ago I was list I listed a piece of property and as I was sitting there I said, Hey, may I share with may I may I ask you why did you decide to list with me? I said, You interviewed ten people. Like that was their goal. We will formally interview ten people. They were for sale my honor. And I remember I was their like their first interview. And I thought for sure I'm gonna get them to sign the contract right when I was there. And they didn't. This is where I interview a few more people. And I did everything to try, to, at least at my skill set then, to try to get them to say, look, let's do this. But they didn't do it. And after 10 times they interviewed, and I called them a few times in between as they were having their interviews, they called me back. I still remember it. I was just leaving a jazz game, and they said, hey, could you come over either tonight or tomorrow? And I go, they go, no, it's late, but or tomorrow. And then can you come over and list our home? And it was like, I got the call back. It was like so bizarre. They called me. And I remember that, again, I remember this little concept that I really came to the conclusion that anytime I'm trying to manipulate, other words like might be force something to happen, force them to sign the contract, manipulate them by like, you know, fear-based thinking, all the things that have nothing to do with persuasion. Think about it. persuasion is kind. Persuasion is patience. Persuasion is loving. Persuasion is giving. Persuasion is doing the right thing. So the thing that's interesting is that manipulation, words I would use would be intimidation, force, you know, pile driving down on people, you know, being so bold and intense that they feel like they really have been forced into a corner. And you think about how sometimes we are uh, go about the signing or the building of contracts, the scary part is, is that if we go down this path, you'll do business. And maybe you didn't break the law the way you did it, but man, it's sure a lot more fun over here. Now I know that Jess has gotten a lot better and she gets a lot more contracts signed right at the moment, but what I do know is that if you're persuasive enough, it will last long enough that they also still will call you back and things will work out. And you say, well, that's common sense. Well, I don't know. Because back over here where I go back to, look, all of this is about making sure that you're being who you need to be for them. That's ultimately what rapport is. That's ultimately what connection is about. Being who they need you to be for them. And for some of you, you're high level talkers, or you're analytical, or you're a high level driver, or you're really just very warm and, and friendly and amiable, and you, you know, you, you're, uh, you're a borderline, if not a full blown empath, where you feel people's feelings. It doesn't matter really any of those are wrong. What matters is, in fact, Andy thought that's what he was over there, right? I'm You're still warm. Right now I'm real warm and any of our, That's know. right. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay? But I, I, I say that, that it doesn't matter which one you are. I have a deep belief that no matter which one you are, the driver can be driven, but it still requires initiative. The person who's the amiable or the person who's the feeler still needs to have initiative. The key to your success in any personality type that you are, and you're one out of four of those in this room, the reality is, is that you have to have initiative. And the person who is the amiable with initiative is a pretty unstoppable force. The problem is, is that the person who is so concerned about offending people oftentimes is the same person who is that impact, who is that person who has such feeling, and then they lose their initiative because they are basing and living their life based on their fears of offense versus their fears of, of their desire to help people. So again, that's a whole other psychological thing we could go into in that one day, but not today. Okay? All right, communication, persuasion. All right, here's the question. You're out selling real estate. And we're going to talk about whether you're a buyer or seller. What's your job? And before you answer that, I want you to just think about that. What's your job in this business? The, the thing that's interesting, years ago, Stephanie Barnes, 11 years ago, Jason, others, I would ask this question. What's your job? Of course, they would say things, Paul, like, well, my job is to buy, help you buy and sell real estate. Okay, beyond that, what's the job? Because you know, Matt, that the public, if you didn't know, you, you realize that we're rated below the used car salesperson, right? So if you're in used car sales before this, I'm sorry, but you just took a step down based on what the public thinks. But that's unfortunate. I mean, it's just the facts of the deal. It's like, I mean, it's because of the way that unfortunately, the professionalism, the manipulation, the force, the intimidation that unfortunately this business is often done in, but you don't need to do it that way. So again, what's your job? What do you do? What do you do to get what you get? 
And I often have people where they're earning so much money and it becomes such an easy thing for them, they almost feel guilty for earning so much money. You say, well, that's not me. I, I didn't say that was you. But I know there's people who, when they do so much business and it starts to flow to them so easily and they earn so much money, they start to think, well, wait a second, am I bringing enough value? Your number one value, I promise you, is your ability to communicate. Maybe even a better way to say that is your ability to, is your ability to lead. So what's your job? So back in the day, I still remember because she was working there and I was coaching her and it was Stephanie Barnes and I said, hey, I want you to go around to your office and I want you to look people in the eye. And I want you to go up to people like Tim at Keller Williams and say, hey, I want to ask you a question. I already know your job is to help you buy and sell. Beyond that, what's your job as a real estate agent? And I said, I want you to look in their eyes and see if they actually believe that they really have an actual job. And you know what was interesting? What do you think she came back with? She said not one single person came back away from her looking them in the eyes and she could feel their uncertainty. Here's what's crazy. Not even knowing what their job is for a buyer or for a seller. Just think about that, because the public thinks that you, as a seller, as a general statement, I was watching the Golf Channel last night while I was getting ready for bed. This stupid thing came on from Home Bright Light, something like that, you know, talking about how bad agents are and how their homes didn't sell. And the corner says, this illustration purposes only, this is an actor, hate actor. But it was like slamming on realtors and, you know, not getting a home sold. And I was thinking, you know how fascinating it is that the public believes as a general statement that you're doing one thing and that is is that you're putting the home on the market meaning you're slapping it in the MLS and that's all you do. But yet anyone who's done any level of volume, any level of deals, any deal period recognizes, oh my gosh, this is so much harder than just putting a home on the MLS. Or if you're a buyer, oh my gosh, this is so much more difficult than just finding a home on the MLS and helping them buy it. There's all these other things we have to do. But could you describe that, define that? Could you get clear as to like, my job is blank. Now I know some of you have heard this, but man, I'm telling you, if you forget what your job is to a buyer or to a seller, it is next to impossible for you to be able to be successful. It's impossible. How can you speak with great confidence in your job and your profession and then stand behind the commissions and the earnings that you're supposed to have if you don't truly know what your job is? And can you articulate it with power, confidence, and certainty that they go, oh wow, okay, I totally get it. So I just want to talk about that for a minute. And I have, I know some of you have heard this, but man, it's a good reminder. My favorite thing is I'll say, well, the people say, I, well, I, I've heard that before. And I always like to ask, well, are you using it? Well, no, no, I'm not using it. I'm like, well, why aren't you? They go, well, I forgot. I'm like, well, that's why we're talking about it again. Okay, so just look, if you've heard it before, I just want to remind you that Man, one of the best things I could do, April, when I was sitting down with a seller would be like, hey, I know you haven't asked me this, but you should. And I hope you're asking every agent that you're meeting with the same question is, what is my job? What on earth could you possibly be doing for me? That's how I'd say, what on earth could you possibly be doing for me to cost me that much money? I mean, don't you want to know? And they always sit there like, well, yeah, I would like to know. See, the challenge is that until you believe that what you're charging is worth what you're doing, you will talk in weakness to what you charge. You will talk meaty and just absolute, like a wishy-washy, hey, what do you need me to cut my commissions to being if you don't fully, truly understand and with deep belief and conviction as to what you do for your job. Because until you believe what you do, you'll be like, oh yeah, well, when they ask, like, and again, this is in no script book. I just said this in the morning message, but when they say, like, Alan, if you ask me, hey, what are your commission, or would you really willing to cut your commission? There is no script book. There's never a script I've read, nor I have personally created that says, well, how much? That is not the next question to ask after they say, will you cut your commission, Michael? And then most agents go, well, well how much? That's not a script. It's nowhere in any script book. But I know that you guys do that. I know you do. So the question is, if you don't know what you do with conviction and confidence and certainty and authority, then how can you defend what you believe your worth is? And it's the same answer, right? There's attorneys that charge $250 an hour. There are attorneys that charge $1,500 an hour. They both have a degree, a law degree. They both have passed their bar. Why do they each charge different costs? 
more detail. Right? Do you guys actually think, like, how many of you been in the business like two years or less in here? Five years or about five years or less. You think like homies new? Like this new ingredient to discounting. Like, oh my gosh, we never heard of it. For those of you who've been in this business, it started when I was 27 years, 26 years ago. It was Fidelity. I don't even know if they're still around. And it was, we will sell your home either for free if you buy with us and 500 bucks if you don't. And they were everywhere. Then it was all pro. And then they went up in the night. And then all pro because all of the agents from there that were so scarce in their belief of what was possible, Brady Long office literally right next to me at Realty Executive said, oh, opportunity, equity real estate. And he would have these arguments of playing to the lowest common denominator and focusing on the 20% of the, 80% of the agents that sell 20% of the business. Or could you work on the, working with the 20% of the agents that sell 80% of the business? I have no interest in the people that are the 20% of the market who are 80% of the agent count. That's one way to build, build your business. Brady and I, he called, I remember he, I, he just came from that company, so forgive me. But it's, he was one of my close, he used to be one of my close friends. But he called me and said, he, I still remember, he was in this building, he yelled, he goes, what's wrong with you? I go, what do you mean what's wrong with me? I said, because I'm training all of your people, what do you mean what's wrong with me? And he said, that's not true. We answer our calls every single time on compliance. I said, I didn't say that. I talked about actually selling real estate, Brady. And I said, you and I sat next to each other for four years, one door away from one another. And I'm just telling you that, that this business is something that you have to understand. If you want, Look, if you want to focus on how much you can save per transaction, that is one way. But I have to believe that we are part of an earth, a universe, a planet that is absolutely abundant. And if you actually believe that you're going to cut your expense to success, you can only cut so far. At some point, all that matters is the volume, the increase in the dollars that you earn. That's how you thrive. That's how you make mega amounts of money or mega amounts of success. And whatever that dis the definition is, that is for you to decide, not for me to decide. Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. Put more than just your eyes in here. <laughs> we're not, we're, Sam, we're, fully we're, 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 we're leaving at 1240. Hold on, we're leaving, I'm just making sure we're leaving at 1245, right? I just got back. From? from? Oh, from some other thing. Okay, all right. Does everybody know Sam Bell? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's scary at times if you say it like it's like a real intimate com relationship. I only say that because he deals with all the mega problems of this company. All right, just kidding. All right. Sam Bell, president, quasi general counsel, kinda. All right. And there's Darla. From Westlake Village, California. Welcome. Good to have you here today. Not used to driving in the snow. Yeah, I, I, I suspect. I was looking at the temperature in Westlake today. It's 58 degrees and sunny. Yeah, yeah. So she works with the company over there in California. Um, all right, so where were we? Where were we, Jess? You're going to tell us what our job was. Yes, I'm going to tell you that. Please tell us. My, oh, by the way, my favorite thing, by the way, if you are employed by me, is, and, 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 and Jason, you can appreciate this. I'm sure I can. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always say this. I wasn't clear, because I guess I must be confused, but I didn't realize that you had chosen to rewrite your job description without telling me. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? You've never said it to me. Well, I'm not to you, but I, I've said it in a yes, group. Yes, I have said it to, in a group settings. <laughs> I, I, so my favorite thing is I get all I get people rewriting their job description. I'm just challenging you stop rewriting your job description because it's difficult. Stop rewriting your job description because it's hard. Stop rewriting your job description because you're avoiding calls. Rewriting your job description because your level of rejection that you can experience. Just as a side note on that, just look. Your level of rejection, it's a simple. Something magical of getting on a phone or knocking on a door, but the level of rejection that you can take will always equal the amount of money that you're earning. If you if you're able to handle a high level of rejection, no, 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 
fact, not even more than no, like, like kind of like the no's like, get the hell off my property, no. Like if you can handle that type of no enough times, then guess what? You'll make a huge amount of money. Here's the scary part, Jonathan, you ready? Here's your birthday, like after birthday, two days later info. Like level of like new aha. Here's the deal. The level of rejection that John is willing to take or Jonathan's willing to take will always be the amount of money he earns. And the deal is, is that if we play the game of low rejection, our income will be low. And so here's the scary part. Think about this. Just follow me on this. Why? Don't go to sleep on me, man. Were you in that ethics thing? Yes. Is this oh, yeah. better? I don't know. Because half the group left and was like, I was like, I see weird. we were talking. I'm like, man, tell me how to keep my license. They're all here. Tell me how to actually sell real estate. Well, I'm not interested. I'm like, I got something else to do. I'm almost like, jeez. You know? So, anyway. Where am I? What am I talking about? Gabby, I was going to give you something. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. No, seriously. Think about this for a second. You don't call the people you're supposed to call because you're afraid to call them. But the very people who you will never, think, just follow me this, the very people who you will never talk to, never knock their door, never do business with, never have an impact in your life, except they're the very reason why you don't knock and why you don't talk. And that is the people who control your life. You will never earn from and never communicate from. And they control your life because of the fear of rejection. The stress of not knowing what to say. We can cloak in all different ways. Fear. Fear of rejection. Fear of not knowing what to say. Fear of, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to be a, oh, I, I don't want to be a salesman -y person. I don't want to be a salesman. I didn't realize I was going to be in telemarketing. Well, I, I, I was given a hard time because I understand that my own daughter, give, give me your name again. Miriam. 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 Yeah. My daughter, Miriam, I said right? Yeah. Miriam, my daughter, who's sitting next to you, said to my wife, by the way, you know, dad always rips on feng shui. And she's like in the middle of like interior design, feng shui like maniac stuff. And my, because my wife's trying to get her interior design degree, so I'm, I'm all, but I'm still going to do it, April. I'm still going to say this. Unless you're going into feng shui, that is not your job. Unless you're a stager, <laughs> that's not your job. And you're not a marketer. You're not even, I don't even like the word realtor because it confuses people that you're an actual salesperson. And if you don't remember that you're a salesperson, then you're thinking, well, I don't want to be a telemarketer. Well, but, but why does that even matter? You can choose to knock on doors. You can choose to have somehow figure out a way to people to call you. You can go buy leads online. It's not like that's a secret. People are like, oh, don't tell people I'm going to buy leads online. Why? Like, I don't care your source of business, but there's ways to do your business. There's ways maybe to do it more profitably. There's ways to do it not so profitably. I, 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 I'm not worried about your source. What I am worried about is how many people are you willing to talk to so you get to present, so you get to communicate. Most of you, as a general rule, are not talking to enough people. Remember, the number of deals you do in a year will be in proportion to the number of people you talk to. And if you're averaging 10 or 15 deals a year, I bet you on average for 240 days a year, I bet you you're averaging 10 or 15 people you're talking to. It's that simple. You can complicate it more than that, but it's not. It's not. You want to add $250,000 of income consistently, 42 weeks of the year, prospect by door or by phone, or smoke signal, I don't care, but do something, prospect for 15 hours a week. And that will equal $250,000 more of income. So the key to this business is consistency. I know there is not a single problem with any of you being able to say anything on any script. Do you have plans on moving soon? Do you want to move soon in your future? When do you plan on moving? I don't care which one you use. And I always love it. People are like, oh man, I found the perfect one. Like, this is the one script. Changes everything. No, it doesn't. Words don't change anything. Presence does. Confidence does. Certainty in your voice. Your lack of attachment to the must have the deal. They feel that. All of that is about the emotion and the presence. If everything is about 7% of communication is about the words that you say, if you haven't seen this before, right? 7% is the words, 38% is the tone. 
and 55% is your body language. Fascinating how much focus we put on words. And that's why people like say, well, I didn't, real I, I didn't really want to work on myself. I just wanted to sell real estate. You can't do both of them at a high, you can't do that at a high volume without working on both things. In the words of Jim Rohn, work harder on yourself than you do at your job. That is the key to this business. And if you don't work from the inside out, if you don't revolutionize who you are, look, it's simple. If you don't want much, here's the good news. You don't have to become much. So if that's the deal, then don't worry about it. But if you want to earn a tremendous amount of money, then you better become a tremendous leader at every level, how you communicate, how you discipline yourself, how you hold your mindset, your confidence, your belief, your, your interior belief about who you are. Okay. By the way, I'm trying to get through as much as I can, but I would love it. I'd be honored if you're there. I mean, it's, we're, we're doing a, a two and a half day event, like this whole thing. If you haven't heard about this with our, our uh, coaching uh, platform and things that we're doing, but uh, on February 4th, 5th, and 6th here in Salt Lake, uh, we believe it's going to be downtown, but we're going to have a two and a half day event. Uh, in fact, you were at my very first one I ever did back in the heyday. Uh, but we're going to have a two and a half day event where we're going to spend good eight, nine hours together uh, for two and a half days. And uh, we've got a bunch of people coming from California, got a bunch of people coming uh, within the market, and uh, we're charging basically 200 bucks to get there. And if you're an agent uh, within Everest, it's 145. So uh, for us, I'm fine if you're throwing it on a ledger which you can, but I'd love to have you there and spend two and a half days together. And we're just gonna break down every single thing and piece to this business uh, as we do so. And we're gonna do this on a quarterly basis, which we're really excited about. So, um, let's go to one th other thing before we jump into this, 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 this uh, outline I wanna show you. <clears throat> I, and I'm still going to get back to the four things that I want to talk about. Like, what's your job, by the way? I didn't forget that. Mm -hmm. But I got ahead of myself. Most of what we get in life is based on the limitations or the beliefs that we believe are unlimited. And I just want to remind you that if there was two major fundamental beliefs that I know every agent needs to have, the first one is to believe this. I'm just going to write it as I say it, and I've said it for years. I believe I am the best agent for the job. Then you say, do I have to put down people to say that? No. And you say, well, what if I'm not? Well, what are you going to do? Walk in there and go, well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't be here, but, you know, Paul can't be here, and he is the best agent. And, well, um, since I'm here though, will you list with me? I mean, I, I have to fundamentally believe that I'm the best agent. And even if Paul and I are in the same room, I need to believe that. It is literally a declaration. It's not a put down on anybody. It's just a fundamental belief that I believe that. And if you can change, I was talking to Leslie's group, look, if you can change your religion, if you can change your political beliefs, your religious beliefs, I'm thinking you can change that belief. And look, any of you who have any connection, uh, any impression, any direction to a child, I, I, I know that if you're conscious of it, what you're trying to do is to direct a positive, strong belief. That's it. That's it. That's all that you're trying to do. And if you can create that belief system inside them, then all of a sudden the hope is, is that when you're not there, when they're on their own, that they believe that they are a champion at some level in their life. Because you won't be there all the time. But just ask yourself, when you're walking up to the door to take the listing or to work with the buyer, do you really believe you're the best agent? Or are you going down a story in a mindset of like, oh man, I hope they don't cut my commission. Oh man, there's a bunch of agents I'm competing with. I don't know if I'm going to say all the right stuff. You know, I don't know if they're going to like my presentation. What if they ask me to cut my commission? What if they ask me to do open houses? I don't want to do open houses. I mean, we start going to all this stuff that has nothing to do with fundamentally just simply being in this space, like holding on to yourself and saying, I believe I'm the best agent for this job. It's a really important thing to state, not from a place of ego, not from a place of put down, 
not from a place of tearing down another human being, just a simple statement of who are you? What do you believe about yourself? And the second belief is that you can get, I'm just going to put here, get the job done. How many of you have ever been asked, do you think you can sell the home? And they're like, oh, well, um, I, well I, I think so. <laughs> I have listed so many homes over the years, they go, I will say, why did you list with me? And this is the answer. Because you believe you can sell the home. And then you're, who are on the other side, go, well, but how do you know you can? Well, I usually follow it up with, which we'll get to this even this week or next in the morning meetings, but I might, if Tim was my client, say, well, Tim, I absolutely believe I can sell your home if you follow my plan, my pricing strategy, and you allow me to lead you through the process. I believe I can get the job done if they let me navigate them and lead them through the process. So do you believe you can get the job done? Do you believe you can help them find the right home? Do you believe that you can get the home sold? Do you believe you can negotiate the best contract? Look, first and foremost, it's a declaration of what you believe. It's not walking out onto the basketball court. Michael Jordan didn't walk out on the basketball court and went, I hope we win today. <laughs> can you imagine Wayne Gretzky going, I hope uh, I score today. I hope it works. Hope is not a strategy for business. <coughs> I just think about that. Stop the, the nonsense of that type of conversation inside your, your head with that type of story because you can never come to the place of confidence that's necessary that when you go and do the activities they're all with no authority, no confidence and they're weak because you haven't first set in motion what your fundamental beliefs are. So again, what do you believe? Okay, now let's go to this. I got ahead of myself. So your job. I'm not talking about the job of 80% of your time prospecting, negotiating, presentations, price reductions, and uh, working with highly qualified buyers. That's one angle of it. Yeah, that's you behind the scenes doing your thing. But if I looked in the eyes of a buyer or a seller, what's my job? And can you say it with such certainty and confidence that they go, whoa, he or she actually really believes that. That's what they're going to do. Okay? Number one. Aside from, again, we know that we help people buy and sell real estate. Number one. It is there to, uh, oh gosh, I did that wrong. Here we go. Consult and advise. Yeah? Yeah? We got the first one right. Perfect. <laughs> right? I'm just going to give you what I consider to be. This is this is what I did. I'm going to drop that. But I'm going to ask you a favor, even though I've picked on you. Yeah. Because my back right now, just with my surgery I just had. Thank you. Thank you. I won't be so mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. You guys all heard that, right? <laughs> Consult and advise. Number two. Now, now look. So number two. Um, is, 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 uh, well, let's just do her for the listing. So um, let me put here plan of action. I'm going to put a few things up here. Plan of action, but I also put uh, market and expose. Okay, so I'm selling the house. That's my deal. But right, if I'm working with a buyer or a seller, of course my number one job is to consult and to advise them. To get rid of all the guesswork. To navigate a smooth transition of selling their home and getting to the next one. Second, my job is to market and to expose and to execute my plan of action to get your home sold. Now, that's a little bit different than, well, I'm just really good and our company's like really well known and, you know, I'm really going to work hard for you and I have your best interests in mind. I mean, you say, well, that's not what I'm doing. I'm like, well, I would tell you that if your closing ratios are not up in the 80 percentile, I mean, you go on 10 listings and not 10 listing appointments of your mom, your dad, aunt, your uncle, and everybody else who feels sorry for you and still lists with you. I'm talking about actual people you've never met, don't know, decided to meet with you, possibly referred by someone to you, but you are competing against other people and you have to set a standard of what it means to be a leader in this industry. That's a different conversation than, well, okay, I listed four homes last year and they were all people who 
you know, really were related to me and my best friends. And I'm not saying don't list those, but man, if you want to really take off in this business, start figuring out how to get business from people you don't know. And the only way you can do that, it comes back over here, is to take a, take a check on what you're doing from a level of communication. Gosh, what do you really believe? What are your intentions when you step in here? Okay, now here's my job. Now I'm this like warrior, I am this agent, I'm this salesperson who's ready to really do this thing and bring it together. Okay, so number two, I'm just gonna put here, I can't see. If you're working with buyers, I say find you, I used to say find the perfect home. All right, for you. Find you the home. I'm going to consult. I'm going to advise. I am going to make sure you are highly educated and you have the absolute certainty that when number two happens and we find you that perfect home, I'm going to advise you, consult you to making sure that this works out for you. Number three is we're going to negotiate the best possible price okay we're gonna we're gonna negotiate the best possible price hey what are we gonna do we're gonna if, if it's quick I'm gonna say look I'm gonna consult and advise you I'm gonna absolutely do everything I can to expose your home to the market man if someone turns on a computer they're gonna know about it your home you talk about having an open house your home's gonna be open 24 hours a day seven days a week and we're gonna do everything to make sure someone knows about it and then as we bring in the showings, we bring in the offers, we're going to negotiate the best possible price. We're going to do everything to protect your equity because it's not just about passing back emails and scans back and forth. That's not what it means to be a great negotiator. What it means to be a great negotiator is to know everything you want so that we can then do everything we can to get it. And the reality is, is most people think that it's just passing paperwork back and forth. And we're going to take that to a whole little level. Number four is we're going to oversee the transaction. We're going to run out of time from the standpoint of like a full-blown presentation. But just know that that's kind of what we're building up to. And I say kind of because not everything is up here that I want. But I want to just, if, if you... Look, this Thursday and Friday, 8 a.m., this is the stuff that we're going to just keep building on. And I want to build from that to say, okay, now what would I do to give an actual presentation? My favorite thing is, is my best story of this, of all of them, is a coach from another company who used a listing presentation that literally, this is what they said. If you talk to me about this presentation again, I will cancel my coaching contract because I'm on month to month don't talk to me about this because it became so adversarial and what changed it from being like a 30 40 percent co uh, conversion ratio of getting and taking listings was when I went through what I'm gonna go through over these next this next Thursday and Friday tomorrow and the next day is we're gonna go into depth into that presentation and that's the presentation that this individual uses today and has an 80 plus plus percent closing ratio and loves loves the environment of taking listings because it is so simple and so easy. At the end of the day, I can just tell you that your presentation should be something that you love. It should be something that you're totally engaged in. It should be something that you're excited to give. It should be something that when you speak to it, that you like feel it here and that it feels very natural. And I'm not talking because you can't learn a new script and people say, well, it doesn't feel natural because you haven't ever used that script. There's also a part of the fact of what you know to be true. And I just would tell you not to deny yourself of that. I have a deep belief that what my biggest thing I've realized over the years, I used to get so mad if an agent would leave or you know, an agent would go start another company or another situation would occur that could be very frustrating to think like, oh my gosh, I've been so wrong. But what I realized is that what makes me most proud in this industry is our ability, not only because we're independent contractors, but I want you to be independent. I don't want you to be like, like, you have to have like me around if or this company around you or you can't make it I love the fact that you use it as a resource but what I don't want is this I can't even spell dependent NC so I'm just gonna spell depend good is you don't have to 
be good in this business and spell. Just for the record. <laughs> it's all done for you. Okay? But look, dependency or independent? Are you dependent on everyone on the outside? Or do you become so independent within yourself, so sure of yourself? Again, not an egomaniac, not some psycho where people go, oh my gosh, there's that guy, there's that girl. And, you know, not, not the ego of what I do, what I have, and what other people think of me, not driven from that place of ego, but driven from a place of, again, a fundamental belief, a confidence in yourself, knowing you can do your job, and that you're independent of anybody else. That's the presentation I want you to have. I want it to where you own it. When you sit down, you're like, man, this is good. And it feels so good to give it. It doesn't feel manipulative. It doesn't seem and feel forceful or intimidating. So look, you can either work from a place of inspiration and inspire people into action and sign a contract, or you can work from a deep place of intimidation and force people to sign contracts. You can do it based on fear, you can do it on loss, you can do it, you can do it, you can take that whole angle. Or you can inspire people because they're so connected by who you've become, what you are, the presence you bring, the leadership you offer. And I go back to people go, oh no, 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 work on the words you're saying. What's more important? Just think about this. The words. So what you say, what's more important? Just think about this. What's more important? What you say. So the words. When, timing's pretty important. But what's more important than anything? How? The words are only a replication or a, 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 or, or a, a almost like a, 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 a voice to the world. Your words are just a voice of how you feel and how, based on how you say them. See, I can say, Leslie, to Jason, I could do that. I could, but I won't. I could do it this way. I could say, I love you. But that probably, you know, the way things have been going today, damn, it wouldn't be that way. It would be this way, because it's all about the way in which I say something, right? How I say it, I go, I love you. I just said the same words. So is it really the words? It's not the words. The words are important to a degree, but it is how you say those words. I love you versus I love you. Or you could get real crazy, like, I hate you. Like, to your lover, right? That's kind of crazy. Or you could say, I like, with great venom in your voice, I hate you. And there's a whole different, but the exact same words. Remember that. So the words are only as good as the tonality and how you use them. And it all has to do with what's going on inside of you, guaranteed. Your belief, your confidence, your commitment to yourself, your intentions, your openness, your absolute non-attachment to what happens as long as it's the right thing for the client. They feel all of that. So if your intentions aren't being met, what you want to have happen, take a step back and say, man, what is the presence that I'm offering out to the marketplace? Because your presence, if it's not getting you what you want, because I know there are some of you in this room, I know she's one of them, that if she just shows up more often on an appointment, she doesn't, it doesn't even matter what she says. It just doesn't matter. So again, I would argue that yes, say the right things, but it's, man, it's so much more than that. I said in closing, but I can't say in closing again, so we're still in the same clothes. Just remember, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. if I haven't offended you yet, this might, Jason. I've said this a lot, but if you're a jackass, scripts don't fix that. I just want to be reminded of that. If you are a jackass to life, to people, how you treat them, who you are. Your words won't fix that because everyone sees through it. You know when someone is lying to you like that. You know when someone is insincere like that. You know when someone's smiling and it's completely a fake like that. You don't think a client knows that? So just remember that as important as these words are, the reason why this whole company is about working from the inside out is because if you can't get right here, then what you say will have no meaning. Remember that and the power of that. Now this is what I'm going to leave you with. I just want to role play it. So Matt, I'm going to role play it with you. You ready? Yes. There you go. So if someone asks me, hey, what is it that you do to sell homes? Or more importantly, I love it when they don't ask. And I said, I always say, 
Hey, you know, I find it interesting. No one's asked you, has it asked you like what is really the job of a real estate agent? Oh, let me guess. They talked about their little marketing plan. They talked about, ooh, the wow of technology. Is that what the last guy just did? Because the real challenge is, is that what I've realized is that most people don't know their job. And whether we list the home or not tonight, I hope that you will ask every agent who stands in front of you, what is their job? And look in their eyes and see if they actually, you actually believe that they believe they know what their job is. Because the greatest challenge and the greatest tragedy would be for you to list with someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Fair? So may I share with you what I'm do for what I, what I'm gonna do for you? Yes. How I'm gonna help you? Please. Okay, the first thing, Matt, is we're gonna consult and we're gonna advise. We're gonna do everything within our power to make sure this is a smooth process. We'll probably have a little turbulence, but just like most airplanes, right? They, arrive, they land or they fly up, they hit a few turbul little bit of turbulence, I'm gonna be there to pilot it and we're gonna land safely. Good? Okay. We're gonna navigate together. Now, if I'm trying to do this quick, I'll just do it quick like I am, but I might stop and say, guys, get in the habit. If you're just talking all the time, you may say, wait, you talk all the time, not when I'm in these presentations. Do you find value in that? Would that be important to you? Would that be something you want me to do? Is that something you want me to do when I put the home on the market today? I'm hoping Matt's going, well, yeah, do you not want me to advise you? Well, no, I want you to. Is that something you want me to do? You think that's valuable? Would that be worth it to you? Yes, yes, yes. Great, let me tell you number two that I'm going to do. I'm going to market and expose your home. There is not going to be a human on earth that if they have a computer, they're going to know about your home. Your home will be held open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that we know that when someone shows up to see your home, they got to be pretty serious. And here's the good news. Century 21 is synonymous with real estate. There's no confusion when the sign goes in the yard, whether you're running for office or selling your house. That's the good news. So here's the great part. Is that, and I'm at that point, is there, do you see value in the name? Do you see value in our marketing? Hey, is what's important to you about marketing? What would you like to see done? I might get into that. But again, and I might even say, hey, we'll get to details of that, but just know, no one's gonna take better care of you in regards to marketing and exposing that something. Company, or, uh, property. Number three is we're gonna negotiate. We're gonna negotiate, we are gonna, we are gonna turn these people upside down and shake the money out of their pockets to make sure your equity is protected. We're gonna make sure that we are serious about not what most agents believe, which is most agents believe, oh, I'm a really great negotiator. What they really meant is I'm really good at passing faxes and emails and scans back and forth. That's not negotiating. Negotiating is about actually having a conversation with another human being and making sure you hired someone to get you what you want. Not, hey, my commission, not what the other agent wants, not just some you know, middle ground of possibility, but really defending what you want. Is that valuable to you? Yep. Would you want me to do that for you? Would you want something, would you want something like that when we list the home? Yes. yes, 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 right? And if they say, well, I don't know, then I'm like, well, what do you mean you don't know? You want me to not negotiate on your behalf? Well, no, no, I didn't really understand your question. Okay, so you want me to do that when we list the home? Yeah, yeah, I want you to do that. And then number four is, look, do you realize that the average home sale takes 150 calls? They're calling people like Leslie back there. They're calling mortgage people. They're calling the title, the appraisal. The, the, I mean, the, the calls are endless. 150 plus phone calls just to keep a transaction together. My bottom line is to make sure that I am the guy sitting there either you know, at the closing table watching your wire go out and all the funds that you and all the equity that you have in this home, or number two, to hand you that check. So here's my question. Do you believe that I believe I know what my job is? I do. Yeah. And would you want someone who understands that? Yes. Or do you want someone who's like, oh, we're going to put do the three P's. We're going to put a home a sign in the yard. We're going to uh, put it on the MLS and we're going to pray it sells. No, I want what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. So you ready to get started? Yeah. Ready to sign the contract. And if you actually don't think that is exactly how I did it, with all of it getting slowed down a ton. Asking more questions, but the simple thing like, hey, is that something you want yet? Are you ready to get started? Should we take care of some paperwork right now? That was what we worked on years ago. It doesn't need to be like, so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Sign the contract! I don't need to be like some freak show of like signing contracts. Because that's what people are thinking. i got to force them, drive them. All right, got to really muscle up here to get them to sign the contract. My normal thing was like, you ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's get started. How do you spell your first name? That was, that, was like, that was how hard my closes were. 
Uh, it was, hey, how do you feel about what I've shared with you? Hey, I feel great. How do you feel about Century 21? I feel great. Hey, how do you feel about us working together? Great. Ready to get started? Oh, okay, great. It doesn't need to be all this crazy crap that I watch in words and scripts and dialogues. It is a simple business. Keep it simple. And again, if you're persuading, it'll be as simple as them either, you're going to say, you're ready to get started, or, hey, what do we do next? I thought you'd never ask. Let's take care of some paperwork. That is what will happen when you persuade. That is what happens when people feel your authority, your leadership, and your conviction. So I hope that you'll be here the next couple of days because we're going to get into great detail of what that presentation gets. We'll slow it way down and we'll work on different segments. And whether you're working with buyers or sellers, it applies. Just make the twist that you need to with whatever we're talking about and you'll know the angle to take with it, whether it's the buyer, the seller, the title, the mortgage, you know. Any thoughts, comments, questions? Go take a listing. Go take a listing. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you. So you're feeling good? Yes. Like nice and